Hello game makers, working again with the survivor game template we're going to learn how to add a new enemy type, namely an angry looking boss pick. We're going to learn not just how to define our own enemies with their own new sprites, but also how to change their health and behaviour and control how and when they spawn. The first thing to do is bring in our new sprites. This particular enemy has a sprite for walking, charging and for getting hit by an attack. The sprites are called SBR underscore boss pig underscore walk, SPR boss pig run and SPR boss pig hit. Also be sure to set their origin points to around the center of their feet so they can all rotate and swap between sprites correctly. Here are the origin points I'm using for these sprites. Then we're going to make a new enemy object. Our boss pig is going to behave pretty similarly to a regular undead pig at first, so we'll just duplicate obj pig un and rename it to obj boss pig. All our enemies are based on a parent object called obj enemy that handles most of how enemies work. This makes it very easy for us to add new enemies that just inherit all of this default behavior. All of these gray events are directly inherited from obj enemy. If we go to our create event we can see some specific definitions for the pig enemy that we just copied. Here is where the hit points of the enemy are set. For our boss enemy we can change this number to 15 giving it 5 times the health of a regular pig. Next we'll update these sprite variables with our new sprite names. Lastly, we want to define some new variables for our special boss pig. We're going to give it a fancy charge attack just to make it a little bit different. Boss charge cooldown and cooldown max will track how often the charge can happen in frames, so every 120 frames we'll do a new charge. Charge distance is the distance we have to be from the player to perform a charge, and charge active is when we are charging. We also need a boss variable just to tell us that this is a special boss enemy, we'll use this a bit later on. For now though, we also need to add this variable to our base enemy object in the create event where we'll set it to false so we know regular enemies are not bosses. Now to get our new enemy into the game, we're going to go to our main game controller object, obj game. In the create event we define a lot of different things about how the game works. We're going to add a new variable that tells us if we've spawned a boss on a given wave, as we only want to spawn one of these bad boys at a time. So add global boss spawned equals false. A little further down we have the spawn enemy function that runs on a loop during any given wave. You can see already how certain hero levels cause different enemy types to spawn. So we're going to check if we're at the right level for our boss to spawn. It can be whatever level you want the enemy to spawn at, but for now, just so we can actually see it working right away, uh, we'll set it to 1. So if we're level 1 and we haven't spawned a boss yet, so boss spawned is false, then our enemy to spawn should be obj boss pig. And then we should set boss spawn to be true so it doesn't keep spawning more of them. To reset this check for future waves in case we want more or different boss enemies, we need to go to the next wave script that gets called whenever we level up. At the bottom we'll add a quick line to reset boss spawn to false. If we run the game now, we can see a big boss pig with lots of health joins our wave. It's a little boring right now and just sort of feels like a regular enemy. It even has the same health bar. So let's give it a charge attack and make it a little more interesting. If we open our boss pig object and go to the step event, we can see that it is just inheriting the basic behavior of a regular enemy object. First let's select this and copy it with Control c and then we can right click and hit override event to create our own step event that replaces that behavior. I'm going to paste in the old code because we want to keep this top and bottom bit, but replace this section in the middle. Then let's add some new behavior. First we'll check if boss charge active is less than or equal to zero. If so, that means we're not currently charging. If so, then we'll just move towards the player like normal, we'll set our direction to face the player, and our speed to be 4. We'll also force our sprite to be our regular walking sprite, except if our hit sprite is currently playing. This is just so we come out of our charge animation correctly when we come back to normal movement. We'll set image speed to 1, and then reduce the boss charge cooldown by 1 every frame. Then we'll see if we're currently closer to our player than the boss charge distance, and if our boss charge cooldown is less than or equal to 0. If it is, then we'll set boss charge active to 60 or however long you want a charge to last for and then set the current cooldown back to the maximum. If boss charge active is not less than or equal to zero and we're currently charging, we'll double our speed to 8 and we'll reduce boss charge active by 1 which will eventually return us to normal behavior when it drops to zero. Lastly, while charging we force our sprite index to be our attack sprite. Again, except for when we're in the hit sprite, that overrides it. And that's it for the charge behavior. One more tiny tweak before we run the game. Let's go to our base enemy object and make it so boss enemies get a wider health bar to make them stand out a bit more. Go to the draw end event where our health bar code is and add a new temporary variable here called width multiplier and set it to 1. But if boss is true, we'll set it to 2 instead. 
Then we'll go through these two draw sprite EXT calls and multiply the X position adjustments by our width multiplier. This will double the width of the health bar for boss enemies. Finally, let's run the game. Here our boss enemy is now doing a cool charge attack when it gets close enough. Hopefully this goes to show just how easy it is to add your own behaviours on top of the existing code in this template. From here you can go on to make however many enemies you can come up with. Best of luck, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.